So the reason I'm making this little video here is because I couldn't find one on the internet on YouTube. Um, and it's dealing with cutting stock that's bigger than five millimeters. So you want you want to ask why I want to cut stock bigger than five millimeters? Well, I had a reason. So the reason is I've got a um, tool rest. I've got a bunch of tool rests. This one I jury rigged. Um, kind of did a cool thing here. So I went into a store. I basically got a bolt. I shaved the bolt down on the edge so it fit into the slot here. And then I bought a couple of huge washers so it could slide nicely. And I bought this, uh, whatever you want to call it, nut for the end. It's a uh, durable plastic on the end here. And then this is the tool rest. So, But what I wanted to do is make a flag so I could uh, so I could drill pivots. So in order to make a flag, I need to have steel that would fit into this post, right? Now this isn't representative, but I've got some on the way and it's about seven millimeters wide here. So if I loosen that and took this out, um, you'll see that, ee -oo, ee -oo, ee -oo. that's a squeaking sound. You'll see that this is a lot wider than the steel. So I've got some stock coming in that's just a bit wider than this so I can cut it down. So, because you can't, when you get it, it's supposed to be the right size, but you know, you can always trim it down. So, so the problem I had is, is how do I cut that on my lathe? Um, and so I did a little reading and I said, I said well, you need a, a chuck, like a three or a four jaw chuck to cut that on your lathe. So, so I had to install a chuck on my lathe that would take a piece of stock that's bigger than five millimeters because my sockets that I have only go up to or my chucks only go up to five millimeters so if it's a seven millimeter piece of stock steel I'm screwed so I did a little reading here and I saw a, um, a video um, so Bob Trope has a video that we're or Tope Trope Anyway, uh, he's got a lathe video where he actually talks about the Sherline products here and the uh, three jaw chucks. So I said, okay, let me look into it. So I got a whole, I got on the web, went on the web page and I did a little research and I said, okay, if I get a three jaw chuck, then how do I attach that to my lathe? Well, so the three jaw chuck I bought, this is right here, um, and it's uh, quite a nice piece of. Uh, Nice workmanship. Sherline's an American company, and they're Sherlin or Sherline. Anyway, they're an American company, and they make all these products themselves. And there it is there. And and there's probably a product number on here um, somewhere. Uh, anyways, I'll tell you in a few seconds. It's probably in the box here. So there it is in the box. So it's his, it's a 1068 Chuck part number. So you see this? This is the tricky part here. 12 millimeters times one millimeter. Okay, that's the thread for the chuck. So, so the issue I had was, okay, I need to find an adapter that would fit into my Bowley lathe and the, the typical Bowley or standard WW chuck, right? That fits into my Bowley lathe or my Sherline or Sherline lathe, or sorry, my Peerless lathe um, uh, and my uh, Bowley Bowley, uh, what's it called, Lennon Reform lathe, right? Because my chucks fit in all those, th all three lathes, because they're WW standard American lathes, so or American standard fit lathe. So, so I did a little digging, and after the digging, I found this, which is a product from a company called RDG Tools. They're on the edge here, and that is a 12 times one threaded. Um, eight millimeter adapter and it's at RDG tools so they sell this and that's out of England um, they cost about 40 bucks I think all up so that would be probably 40 Canadian uh, would be about two dollars US <laughs> just kidding anyway so about 40 bucks on average so so this is the, the chuck looks like like that so that's a very nice quality product from RDG Tools. Um, there's a slot here that you'd expect.
And so I said, okay, is this going to fit? So I got this. It took a little while to get there, but the shipping, the shipping was not that expensive. Um, so I took out the Shureline uh, uh, three-jaw chuck and said, okay, will this little adapter fit? And I did a little praying first. And I go, la ba la ba. So I did some praying um, in whatever religion you want to pray in. And I did this and said, oh, my God, it fits. So, and it fits like a glove. So that ended up being the product, right? Now, these things here, the three-jaw chucks, you put your stock material into the three jaws like this, and they're self-centering jaws. So these jaws will close in as you tighten the chuck. So, so it comes with two, two of these little arms here, lever arms or whatever you want to call them. It's probably a name for them. And you stick those lever arms into a hole in the front part of the chuck, like that, and a hole on the back part of the chuck, like this, right? And then the chuck, as you move these, like this, the chuck actually opens or closes, right? So if I move it this way, like this, it's closing, and see that's tight on there now, right? And if I move it this way, it's opening the chuck and widening it. And you see the, the distance it widened that chuck is quite significant. So, so what you want to do is turn it to somewhere close to, to where the, 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 the diameter of the stock and then reduce it in size like that, right, until you get it close. And then you've got it basically nice and tight. And then you squeeze it just a bit. You don't have to over torque it because this thing is it's all steel, right? So there's no real give on the steel. So once that thing is fit, it's fit, right? So but so the second step then is to install this into the lathe and then see if it runs true. So I'm going to just bring the lathe up for a second here and then reposition things and see if this will work. Hey, here we have the lathe set up here. This is a peerless lathe. It's a nice lathe. It's not super high end, but it does the job. And and I've got the um, I got it kind of set up here. It's, I apologize for all of the stuff on my desk. I've got to clean it up. It's a Saturday right now, so Saturday morning I tend to clean it up. i got a collection of pocket watches here. I'm kind of, a few of them I'm working on, and some of them are running. So this is a, a really nice, actually, um, Henry Peck watch I just fixed. It's running very well. Um, anyway, that's a whole other story. So I'm just winding it a lot and keeping it healthy uh, for a while to see what happens. So so here's a, here's the... A, uh, chuck again right so i don't recommend putting it in with the way the, this shoreline three jaw chuck in there uh, as this is a pretty heavy this is pretty hefty like this is sizable weight so this could be two pounds even i'm not sure it feels friggin heavy so so what you do is you install the chuck first and then you just put that in there and should find the groove somewhere there it is there and then you just put that in kind of at an odd angle here so trying to get the right camera angle and then tighten it like that and then make sure that runs so let me just spin that up for a few seconds that runs there and then you take the chuck here that's the uh, three jaw right and then you take it and you put it very carefully and I'd support it from the bottom just so you don't ruin the teeth on the uh, adapter I mean, it's all tough stuff, but still, you don't want to strip the teeth on the only adapter that you f happen to find. So, let me see. I'm just trying to get this in here. So, once it's in, then it spins nicely. Hopefully, I'm not too loud with my audio on this because I'm using the thing here. So, you do that. It spins nicely. And then the material here fits in like this on the end. So, you end up with this kind of a situation here like that and then what you do I'm not sure this is going to be tricky to do because of the camera angles so maybe I'll take the shot from the other side so what you do is um, find a space here to move the camera and I'm going to just put it on top of a box and then point it downward there we go so there we go there. So hopefully that's focusing, yeah. So there it is there. So now you've got this configuration here and you've got the pry bars. I'll call them pry bars for now. 
and these go into, I'll put one on top here just so you can see it go in, and then one here like that, and then you have to tighten this, right? So it tightens this way, you kind of can tell, right? And then I just put the stock in there already, and now when you're cutting this stuff, you're only going to have a piece of stock out of this far anyway, so but what you want to make sure is this is perfectly aligned, um, and there's not a lot of there's no end shake in the stock itself. I don't know if this stock is actually straight now, but I'm going to spin it and see if it's uh, does any warbling on me. And you can use this to tighten this a bit more too. So everything is there. So let me just spin this here and see what happens. And there we go. And as you can see, it looks like there's absolutely no movement on the end here. So now one thing that they tell you when you use one of these um, uh, three jaw chucks, you're going to be cutting pretty close to these jaws. And these things are, I think they'll, they could cause some pretty mangling on your finger. Eh? So, so if you're going to use a cross slides on here, then it might be better if you're, depending on what you're doing here, just to take material off because you're not making balanced staffs with this. So, so you're probably just doing things like making tooling and stuff. So you're probably better just to put your cross slides on and then cut it like so you don't have your fingers near here. If you do have your fingers near there with a graver or whatever, you really have to pay attention because this thing spins pretty crazy. And like I said before, it weighs a lot. Um, and there's very little movement on this thing as well. The other thing I want to say before I punch out here is that there's you can get um, a dial indicator as well. I think I have one. I just have to find out where I put it here. But you can get a dial indicator for this, which, and you can mount the dial indicator so it just touches the uh, the metal, and you can actually see whether that is moving or not, right? And that that's a real good indicator. Let me get the dial indicator out here. So this is a digital dial indicator. And it's about this from AliExpress in China. Um, and it's a digital dial indicator. And this puppy dog, you just, I got junk on the floor here to just apologize because I'm making this video for you because no one made one for me. So, so this is your dial indicator here. And let me just get close up here a bit. So that's the dial indicator here. And this is from AliExpress. On China, it's a digital dial indicator, and you turn that on. It's in millimeters and and in inches, either or. And when this plunger is pressed in ever so slightly, right, you can see the variance, which is the distance between the zero setting and wherever it's pushed in. So once you have a, um, I'm I'm waiting for a stand for this dial indicator, but this in dial indicator, you'd put it on here, and you could you could actually turn this by hand. Um, and determine the size, like whether this thing is off from center or not, right? So if you're getting really picky about it um, and you're into super precision, as you turn this here, you may see a difference in the, uh, in the uh, centering of this material. Plus, now, I wouldn't recommend it for, for centering the material because you can tell whether it's centered or not. But when you're cutting the material, um, you can also see whether there's an inconsistency in the... Uh, in the cut as well. So anyway, these are dial. I've got another one coming in too, so you can you can mount it from two different positions, um, and that's a dial indicator that you can use with this as well. So so that and this is from China, and it's a. Let's see if I can find the name of the thing. It's a. Oh my God, I don't think there's a name on it. It is a dial indicator from the dial indicator company in China. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that's that's that. So that's the Sherline Chuck, three jaw Chuck. Uh, highly recommended. I gave you the number of it earlier. Um, that's a adapter from RDG or DS or DG Tools. Um, should remember what I'm telling you. Um, anyway, it's an adapter, as I said earlier, and you can pick that up for around 40 bucks. This Sherline Chuck was on sale for 100 bucks. I live in Canada, so I ended up paying all kinds of stuff for it. I ended up paying duty for it. So sometimes I get nailed with duty. I don't know why, but I got nailed with duty. So it's a hundred bucks US um, and it's a high quality chuck. So I'm really pleased with the accuracy of this and the centering as well. 
So this lathe here is actually really good. It's got a cone bearing in the front. It's extremely accurate, and I've made balanced staffs with this lathe. So this is an old peerless lathe. So anyway, that's the video. I'll try to keep it under 20 minutes. Um, and that's what I did to resolve my problem to cut material bigger than five millimeters as I didn't have any chucks, bully chucks that were bigger than uh, five millimeters. So thank you very much for listening. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. And there's some entertainment value in this video as well. So the entertainment value is basically here. There's the entertainment. Pull off the finger. That's the entertainment for the day.